Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. Recently, I asked Mint Mobile's legal team if big wireless companies are allowed to raise prices due to inflation. They said yes. And then when I asked if raising prices technically violates those onerous to your contracts, they said, what the f*** are you talking about, you insane Hollywood ass? So to recap, we're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Um, this, this, this episode is going to be about partners and partnerships. So, first and foremost, Lou, who was your finest partner? Because you had a great partnership. Although when you went to Arsenal, you was injured. But you and Liam Brady, when you look at partners in midfield of British football, you two must have been up there in that top one. Well, I, <clears throat> the terrible thing in my life is that everything seemed to go wrong. And when I joined Arsenal, um, the first, I didn't want to leave Stoke, number one. But number two is, I thought, well, going to a great football club. And they, I wanted to go there and play with Alan Ball. And uh, obviously, I knew that Brady was a player. Yeah. But I didn't realise how good he was until I got there. But... I got two like sh- two things go wrong really. I, I was number one, I was injured. And number two, I found out that Alan Ball I, they bought me to replace him instead of you know playing with him. So I and I, I think that midfield trio would have been the best. Brady was unbelievable. He was an incredible, incredible player. But that midfield trio, you're absolutely right. It had everything, didn't it? It had right foot, left foot. It had balance. It had it. It had. All the ingredients for the perfect midfield trio, didn't it? It was incredible. Well, I, I, I think they, they, they mentioned that um, it was always said that when Alan Ball was at Everton, they had the greatest, uh, they call them, what they call them at Everton? They call them the Holy, Holy Trinity. Grau, yeah. Holy Trinity. And uh, Colin Harvey, Howard Kendall and Borley. But Borley was, Borley was the best. Yeah. Um, but that, they were a fabulous three, and they, they were always known as the best midfield trio. But I really believe that us three would have been better if I'd have, if I'd have been not if I hadn't have been injured and, that, and had the form I had at Stoke and and with Brady coming through. Brady was an incredible player. I mean, never you mean we never saw uh, left-sided players in Scotland. They had Jim Baxter. There wasn't many players with a left foot in this country, you know, that Brady was just a, a total one-off. He was a freak. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, while I was struggling at Arsenal, the only good thing about it was I was watching him play, yeah. you know, so, which was a, a shame for me, but it, it was a pleasure to be on the field with him. And talking about a magnificent trio, it leads us into our first song uh, of this podcast, Alone by the Bee Gees, a trio that you absolutely love and adore, and I think a perfect pick. What's the story behind this track, Al? Well, I, I, I'm a great, as you know, Paul, I'm a great Bee Gees fan, um, but as we we spoke about, um, you know, it's, it's a known thing that most of their, most of the music and it's like a footballer talking about, you know, they say about they say about me, about West Germany when you played against West Germany. But you played better games than that. You played against Liverpool, but that's a, that's a, the the game that people think of. But with the Bee Gees, they made all these top top records, million sellers, and and uh, as Elton John says in his book, um, you know, most of the songs I made were far better than the ones that were very successful and uh, Alone was an incredible song uh, and it reminds me of me yeah. because I always ended up alone. Was that by by design or just circumstance, Al? What, the song or me? No, you being alone because, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> no, because you do. That, that, that's what happens yeah. when you're... When, that's what happens when you're in a position where, you know, George... George Best uh, was always alone. Yeah, uh, that's what happens. You you, you end up, uh, you know, the, it's like John Lennon with the Beatles. All right, he ended up with Yoko, but 
Yeah. He was he was alone. He was a man alone. And Sinatra sang the, the great album was called A Man Alone. Alone is a great song, and it's a it's a. I mean, you really have to listen to it yeah. to for it to to grasp it. You know, it's a most wonderful song, and out of all that, I'm, I'm a fantastic, uh, big, big Bee Gees fan. And I, I remember when we made uh, Blue is the Colour, they were coming out the recording studio, and I walked past them, and we walked past them, a few of the players. And I was, I missed an opportunity to pull them aside, and you know. But I, I wonder what they were doing in the recording studio, because we got number five, and they never got anywhere. So it's just, that's how stupid life is, you know. Again, it's all about, as you alluded to earlier, some of the more commercial hits wasn't their better and best material. It's what sits to the ears of the producers of radio stations and shows and what they perceive is, is their best. And I'm sure that you could sit down with many an artist and they would all say that song that sold the most for us weren't our favourite song, not by a long stretch. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think the most famous one of all was My Way with uh, with Frank. Uh, he hated it. Mm. He didn't like it. Paul Paul Anker wrote it. Paul Paul Anker mm. wrote it for him, and but Paul Anker sang it. But I think Frank kind of looked at it as a I don't know the, the way he looked at it, but he he didn't like singing it. He didn't like the song. He, he's noted as saying that. I don't like, but he, but when he went on stage, if he didn't sing it, people would scream out, you know, play my way. And he, but he didn't like the song, and it's um, it it, it just, I mean, that is a one outstanding, one great example of, you know, songs that can you can get stuck with, that really weren't your greatest song. I'm sure he has many a song, you know, which. The one that, like you and me, I, I think that's more frank than anything. You know, it, it's it's more romantic. Frank was a romantic, and uh, I think you and me is far better. I'd rather if I was Gab in the morning, I put you and me on, and not my way. I, I don't particularly like my way myself. And leads us nicely into track two, which is you and me. We wanted it all. In bracket. Absolutely, that's where we went wrong. That's where my marriage went wrong. Uh, I think, and a lot of people's marriage goes wrong. It's it's a story. It's a wonderful song. It's a wonderful story that you know um, every you know a couple want everything, and you end up with nothing. You know, there was a lot of love there, but you know it, it ain't gonna work. You know. And and Frank, uh, I mean, the writing of Peter Allen is just phenomenal. You know, and I've I've seen I've got Peter Allen uh, who wrote it. You know, do it on I've got him on video doing it, and he's just fantastic. You know, and it, it there, there's a as we spoke about a, a thousand million times, Paul. You know, there's a great 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 story behind every song. SRB Media. Who was he? What was he? How great was well, he? Well, Peter Allen. Peter Allen. I'd never heard of until I heard Frank sing You and Me, and I looked him up, and uh, it was, um, it, it was, it, it's an incred- another incredible case of what what's more come to the front today. Years ago, it didn't really matter because everybody was like it, I suppose. But he, he was married to Liza Minnelli, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> after that, why they were married, it happened that he come out of the closet. It's like Elton John getting married, and you know, these it takes uh, an individual to uh, a little bit of time to to do that kind of thing. And but now it's just common knowledge, and you crack on with it. But B. Allen was he's an Australian. He, he was a, a wonderful songwriter. He, he he wrote that song, uh, the other song with Carol Barsega. He, he did this and he, he wrote three number ones with big, big people, you know. Mm-hmm. He was a fantastic artist. But in England, if you walked out and you walk into in a pub or, or whatever, because that's all we do in pubs is have a quiz in it and yep. we question each other, nobody ever heard of him. Uh, 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 what a talent, 
you know. Again, that's the beauty of of of. Um, when I say working with you, we actually don't work because we just talk about football and, and music and our, our common love of, of, of different things. And, you know, whether we do a show together, a podcast together, we, we talk you know, during the week as well. And you've introduced me to so many people that I've said, say it again now, what's the name? And then I've gone on Google and I've looked them up and I've gone, wow. And you, you open so many doors. In essence, I guess a player that had so many doors closed during his career opens so many doors for other people in a different way. Well, it's, um, you know, it doesn't mean because you know so much or, I mean, I don't know that much, but yeah. what I do know, what I do know, I, I lived uh, in the day when I came across these people. Yeah. And uh, Chelsea at that time in the in the early seventies, you know, we were surround. I was surrounded by people. I just took everything for granted that these people, everybody knew them, and they they were big. They were big names. They were from whatever world. And I, I just kind of uh, whether it was Peter Wingard, who was who was top man at the time on TV, whether it was Frank Allen, the searches, whether whoever Dusty Springfield, whatever. You know, you it was like an everyday thing, Paul, you know. And um yeah, of of course you you do. You you just as I say, you take it for granted, but as you get a little bit older you and you pick up a newspaper and say, Well, David Beckham knows, you know, he's gone to Hollywood and he knows Tom Cruise, well that that doesn't rub off with me because if you've got money, yep. you can meet these people. But we had no money and we, we were still out, you know, rubbing shoulders with the great Jack Jones and, and Bobby Moore was always around and, you know, the only man to win the World Cup. And, and I, I was very privileged and I'm very honoured. And, and I never, I never ever, when people, I, I speak to people, I, I never, I say, well, I've met these people and all that. And they, half the time, 99% of the time, they don't believe me. But that was just the way it was in, in the 70s in Chelsea. Now, another person that you met and you had a great friendship and I was looking on YouTube and there's a wonderful interview with, with you and Tommy Wisby in uh, in a beer garden and uh, Frank McClintock was there that day, although Frank had, had, had gone to, to another event. Talk to me about about Tommy and, and what Tommy meant to you and how you connected with Tommy uh, in the first place. Well, it's... Um... Tommy Wisby, I, I can look up now. I'm sitting in my computer, and he's, I've got him on my wall. He's, um, he's, he was a wonderful man. Um, probably the whole world think that you know he's a train robber. He was a he was a, a villain and all that. Tommy was one of the loveliest people you could ever meet. Uh, and I, when I'd come out of the hospital, um, uh, a, a very good friend of mine. Uh, Terry Shepard put a, a dinner on for me at one of the big hotels in London. And I was on a top table with my doctor, David Goodyear, and a gentleman come up and tapped me on the shoulder and he gave me an envelope. And I said, what is this? And he, he went, it's from the gentleman over there. And I, I said, no, 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 no. I said, uh, Terry's done the thing for me tonight. He's raising some money at me because I was in trouble. And, yeah. and, uh, and it was from Tommy and, and I, I said, well, I'm going to have to go and see him and give it him back. And I went over to see him and I said, please, Tommy, I'm fine. And I didn't know he's a great train robber. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, it's amazing. And we become such great friends. And, uh, and I remember I said to him one night, uh, you know, because he, he got to meet my mother, my, my father was gone by this time. And I said, uh, Tom, I'm glad you never met my dad. So he, he went, well, why did you say that? I said, because if you'd have met him, he'd have been on the robbery with you and I wouldn't have become a footballer. <laughs> while, while he was away doing time with you, I, I would have no one, no one to get me forward. And he laughed and I, I went, yeah, it's true. He would have, but, you know, because Tommy was such a lovely man and my... My father was always looking to get work and all that. They didn't do nothing wrong. They, all right, they got on the train and 
take some, it was like going to Sainsbury's and taking money, really. They, they worked out well, and uh, it's just a shame that Tommy got, you know, he got labelled with the wrong name, really. He, yeah. he was a, he was a most lovely man throughout. I'm 68 years of age, and he's as good as they come. But that's, and he met Frank, by the way, you know. Yes, and that's a missed, great story as well that you've yeah, got to tell. <laughs> yeah, he's... Um, Tommy was on the... I, I wouldn't say he was on the run, as they call it, but he went to... He went... When he, when he was doing this, that and the other, and he went to Vegas and... Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do, like, four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim-blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. He liked a good life, and he, he wasn't... He, he was far from flash or nothing like that. He, you know, he, he was like everybody's dad, you know. And uh, he goes to Los Angeles and he's sitting in the bar this night and the uh, uh, seedy old bar and he's sitting there having a drink and he couldn't believe his luck. The curtains went open and two two big guys come in and, you know, they look round and who walks in but Sinatra. And uh, he couldn't believe his luck, you know. I mean, he, the first thing he said to the to the fellow behind the bar, please give them whatever they want, you know. And uh, he, and he put a little note with it and said, uh, you know, from the great chain robber. <laughs> and uh, Frank sat there and they they had a few drinks and Tommy forgot it and he but he couldn't believe that he was in the same room as Frank and. Uh, they got up to go. They the, the they the minders done what they did again. They checked outside. They looked around and said, like, "Okay, okay, they leave." But while they were doing that, Frank walked across to him and uh, he said, "You're the great chain robber, yeah." And Tommy said, "Yeah." He said, "I'm your biggest fan." And he went, "That's nice." He said, "It's great to meet the great chain robber." I mean, what a lovely moment! Can you? It's like meeting Beckham Bauer, like meeting. You know, Pele. It's it, it, what a what a wonderful mummy. So he would met his hero in the most incredible, under the most incredible circumstances. Fantastic. But Tommy deserved that yeah. because Tommy Tommy was a wonderful man, and he was also a big fan of Charlie George. Was was Tommy an Arsenal supporter? Because listening and watching that 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 um, video that that you cut there, where where was the pub? Where was the beer garden? That was his local pub over in North London. Yeah. And uh, it was a, it was a day of his book. His um, book launch, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, well, look, let's do a little, uh, let's film this. And we filmed it. And he's very, very, he's a very shy man. Yeah. You know, and I just said to him, your greatest moment. And I said, surely it's got to be. Watching Lee and Brady, yeah, and and he said no. He said meeting Frank. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but he loved football. He loved football. He loved music. He he was one of those that you know. He was one of the old school that loved going out on a Sunday, and get dressed up like the old school did, and he loved pub singers and all that. But Frank was a man, and uh, and he just he just loved his football, and he loved Arsenal. He loved the Arsenal. Now, a wonderful artist uh, up next is um, is Alki Brooks. Don't cry out loud. What what's what's behind the lyrics or that song? And did you ever get to meet Alki? 
No, I did. I one of my great regrets. Um, you know, I miss Dusty. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would love to have met. Her. I, I think she's the most wonderful artist. Uh, but it just happened. I I, I, I was on. The, strangely enough, it, it's not much of the music at them times. But I've been away. From, I've been away from America for four years, and I come back and play for Stoke. And I, I was rooming with my good friend Peter Fox, who was a goalkeeper at Stoke. Yeah. And yeah, we were we were big pals, and and he had this uh, Elkie Brooks uh, thing, and I I've always had my music with me, and he put this on, and you know Pearl's a singer and everything else, but you know this this girl could sing, couldn't she? she I mean, if she'd have been if she'd have been around today. You know, there, there'd be no stopping. She's as good as she was good as anyone. She had the most fabulous voice, and uh, and again, Peter Allen wrote that. You know, uh, which was it's uncanny, really, when you think that different from Sinatra to Elkie Brooks to someone else's song we got there. You know, he, he you know fantastic songwriters you know and put the music but she was she was a great artist SRB media but that's the thing with songwriters they they write songs and i guess in in some situations they write certain songs with an artist in mind and then sometimes they write a song and think hmm i tell you who'd sing that great alki brooks i'll give that to alki i'll phone her up and do you fancy singing one of my tunes and and as a as a then an artist they they must be absolutely overwhelmed that somebody as as great as that looks at them and and it's a tremendous honor to almost bring that baby to life well absolutely you know and you you, you know going back to the elton john situation uh i'm a i'm a massive fan of his uh, i think he's just fantastic and you know, he, he says, uh, who knows? He said that there was one particular song that he didn't want to record and uh, it become a bestseller. And he, he hated it and he, he didn't think it was going to happen. But who knows? You know, it's like I always relate football, music, whatever, in any walk of life. You know, you you know, I've gone from Chelsea. People think of me as a Chelsea player, but I, I go to Stoke and I become... You know, I'm more of a legend in Stoke than what I am in Chelsea because that's I've met the man. You know, it, it just you just click. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what happened with uh, Alki Brooks. This song it just fell into a lap, and it, it, you know, as I say today, it would be that would go to number one straight away. It's the most beautiful song. And the lyrics are great. Isn't it? I mean, don't cry out loud. You, yeah, you know, and 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 you again, being the artist that that you are, you love to go behind those lyrics and listen to that them lyrics. I mean, I'll phone you up, especially if I phone you up in the morning before you've got on your bike, and you've you've got so many beautiful love songs on there. And you know, for people that don't know Alan Hudson, have opinions of you because they think they know you and they watched you play. But me knowing you like I do, you have got such a romantic streak through through you. Well, it just runs through your veins, romance, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and, and I think I think at the end of the day, being a romantic is uh, wonderful. It's um, and I think that goes hand hand in glove with uh, being an entertainer as well. But, if uh, you know we've we've done this thing about Jack Grealish recently, yeah. and how, how great he is, and you know it's the working man's ballet again, isn't it? Yeah. SRB Media. Absolutely, and and it is as you say, it's it's like a love affair, and and f- football won't change, life won't change. It, it is all about love. It's all about partnerships and and partners, and um. The most beautiful girl in the world, Charlie Rich, it, it leads us into our next song. Who was the most beautiful girl in the world that you met? And what is the story behind this song from Charlie? Well, um, I thought I'm, I'm trying to work out who was actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no, it was, uh, the, the reason I sucked that in, Paul, because yeah. it was a great it was a great time of my life, and uh, I moved to Stoke. It was 1974, and uh, a good friend of mine who just turned 80 called Eric Skills at Stoke. He, he marked me at Chelsea in one of my first games, and we become very close friends at Stoke. And he he had a pub in Stoke, and I was living with Jeff Hurst at the time. Strangely enough, I just moved up to Stoke, and uh, I remember going into Elfie's pub on a Sunday, um, and I, this song was on the jukebox all the time, you know, and it just in, and it just goes in your mind, doesn't it? Hey, and I was. And I was split up with my wife at the time, and she was, in my eyes, the most beautiful girl in the world. Um, but it all went wrong. We got back together. But at the end of the day, what a song, you know. It catches the imagination. It's um, it's a song that, you know, to sit down and write it and, and, and to have him sing it, it was, it was just... It was it was wonderful, but that that's why it always sticks out. And people say to me, "What what happened to Stoke?" And I remember the first few weeks I was there, I used to go in this pub, and it was we always used to put it on. And uh, and if you play it, if they again, if you brought it out today, it's a it's a top top song, isn't it? I I remember it as as a kid because um, I remember me me dad buying it for me mum. And, and it is one of the most. I mean, another one that we've played in previous uh, My Love, My Musics is that My Eyes Adored You, again, Frankie Valley, another Absolutely. most beautiful Absolutely. Love, love song. And it takes an absolute art. Well, if you're, if, if you're, if you're going if you're gonna to go home to the missus and uh, exactly. you love your missus and, yeah. you, and you, you, you give her a tape of that, yeah. you give her that song and you give her a bunch of flowers and you say, play that. And, I think mean, you're on a winner, isn't you? Well, you are because that's what my dad done. Mind you, at Christmas, my mum wanted a fur coat and he brought her a shopping <laughs> trolley. <laughs> and she wasn't very happy about that, yeah. let me tell you now. But it was all about that time and those glorious days of the 70s. Now, Jeff yeah. Hurst, what was it like moving in with Jeff and his missus? Well, um, it was quite weird, really, because... Um, at, to be perfectly honest, mate, I didn't really know Jeff was at Stoke when I signed there. I because yeah. it was I wasn't um, I wasn't aware about Stoke City. I didn't know what was going on there. Um, and then I, I moved there, and all of a sudden, I, I read my my boss told me that I was moving in with him. And I said, No, no, I want to. I'm going in the hotel. He said, you, If you think I'm going to let you run around Stoke on your own, and <laughs> and that's how it came about, you know. But, um, it, it, yeah, it was strange. When I mean, a lot of people, I, I suppose a, there are a lot of people that would think, God, it must have been great living. I mean, they, they, he's in awe of some, so many people in awe of him. I think, you know, he's got a hat trick in the World Cup. But there I am living with him. And, you know, I don't really want to be there. I want to be on my own. But um, there was one question I needed to ask him, and that was, you know what went through your mind when you scored the third goal in in the in the final, and he he said to me, you know, this is how lucky you can be. Yeah. He said, I aim for the crowd. Yeah. You know, so um, I thought, well, I was right about you all the time. You know, I would so, say I would say that was the second most luckiest thing about Jeff Hurst. I'd say the most luckiest thing is that Jimmy Greaves got a knock against France and he had a couple of stitches in his uh, in his shin. <laughs> and because of that, Jeff got his, his shirt. But if Jimmy Greaves wouldn't have... If that hadn't have happened to Jimmy Greaves, I don't think anybody would have had a shirt off Jimmy Greaves because in the 60s, Jimmy Greaves was the greatest striker and the greatest striker that England have ever had. Well, uh, I, I, he was. Uh, I was very lucky at Chelsea that I wore his number eight shirt. I yeah. always told him that. Um, I got on great with Jimmy. I love Jimmy, and it's sad that he's not very well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. You know, it, but it's all circumstances, isn't it? And it's like yeah. me. Yes. It's like me missing the the final in seventy and missing the World Cup. These things happen. Jeff got his chance. I mean. Let, 
in all fairness, Jeff Hurst was a great player. I oh, played yeah. with him. His, I played when I played with him. At Stoke, he was on his last legs, and he, he was still a terrific player to play with. You know, you, you could pick him out, and you know, uh, from anyway, he, he was a, a tremendous player. So I can understand that. And the, but uh, I don't know, as, as you say. Um, in in '66, you know, we we never we won the World Cup, but we never did it with style. If, if yeah. we'd have won the World Cup, like Argentina win it, if they'd have won it without Maradona, it would have been any good, you know, because um, he was the greatest. Um, Holland without Cruyff, you know, was, you know, you can win World Cups, but um, we won it. We we actually won it without our best player. There is a school of thought, and, and certainly me dad is in that school, that he was never a lover of Roger Hunt. I mean, I remember growing up. He, I don't know what happened, but um, me dad didn't like Roger Hunt. And I think you could argue that Jimmy Greaves and Jeff Hurst would have been a better partnership than uh, Roger Hunt and Jeff Hurst. Well, I, I don't... I, don't, I, I really... Uh, Jimmy, it didn't matter with Jimmy who he yeah. played up with, you know. Yeah. it's um, But I don't... You know, uh, I spoke to a lot of scousers and I asked them about Roger Hunt and they, but again, football supporters are fickle. Yeah. Um, I, I played in his testimony. I think Chelsea, we played up there in a testimony years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, you know, you can score all them goals, you know. You, uh, I mean, Gary Lineker scored all them goals, you know. Yep. SRB. Get to Smoothie King today and try the new blueberry, raspberry, or watermelon lemonade smoothies. They're all made with real fruit, real juice, and no bad stuff. Just check out the no-no list at SmoothieKing.com. Try the new lemonade smoothies at Smoothie King today.